Come correct or don't come at all. This is the Hard Zog Hustle Podcast. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And we're talking about the hustle, strategy, and mindset you need to win in the areas of your finance, your purpose, and your future. You know what I'm saying? If you have heart and you want to learn how to activate the power of your hustle, then this is the podcast for you, baby. For you, baby. Congratulations. And now, your host, Anthony and Janilka Hartzog. Janilka Hartzog. This is how it should be done. All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Hard Dog Hustle podcast. My name is Anthony, Mr. Hard Dog Hustle himself, and I'm joined here by my beautiful wife, co-host, mother of Alani, Alani's mommy, Janoka, what up? Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great week. Uh, thank you for coming back again. As you know, we ask that you continue to show up. Comment, share, leave us a review, let people know what we're doing all over here at the Heart Zog Hustle Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys are new here, we our goal and our job of this podcast and what we always talk about is to help nine and fives create more impact, influence, and income outside their jobs, outside the nine and fives. Mm-hmm. And that's the purpose of this show and that's the purpose of what we do. Yes. So what's new? What is new? So for the month of September. Like, did I mention? I don't remember. For the month of September, I decided that I want to have Alani try something new each week, a different activity. So she's done uh, story time. She's done gymnastics. And this week we did, uh, what was it, music class with her. Yeah. Um, so that has been fun, just trying new things. She's very social. She likes to be around other kids or stare at them. <laughs> I'm probably like, oh, they do the same thing as me. But it's been entertaining just to try out these things, and you can do it yourself as well. Usually the first class is free, so uh, anything from you, you've been able to join us on that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, the classes have been interesting. I think overall, and we don't know when these episodes are going to be released, so you may be listening to this in a few months from now. Who knows? (laughs) But the thing that... Interesting thing about these classes that we're going to with Alani is that we talk about, you know, freedom and... I'm realizing the impact of the choices that we've been making over the last couple of years. And like today I was like, I'm not going to go. Cause I wasn't going to do, I was going to go home. I was going to be at home and I was going to do some work, but I'm like the purpose of creating this freedom for our family and things we've been working so hard for is to enjoy the freedom, spend more time with the family, spend mm-hmm. more time with the kids. So I think the last two classes I said I wasn't going to go, but each class has, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go because I don't want to miss anything. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been good. The funny thing about these classes as well is that, I noticed that all of them are during the day. So it's like, if you if you work, you can't go to the class. I don't know what, what the expectation is with that, or they just assume that people can make it. I have no idea. They don't have any after hours? Most of them do not. Like, story time does not have an evening oh. time. Well, they have a Saturday. They have yeah. one Saturday at 1030. Uh, the music classes, they may, it's like limited. It's, it's limited, so I don't know. But then we also recognize that there's not many people that look like us in these classes. So that's just another indication that we would have to maybe do an extra group somewhere else or making sure that she sees black people because there is none. We're always the only people there. Always the only black people in these classes so yeah. far. Yeah, we've been to crazy. about three, four different classes mm-hmm. during the day, and we're the only black people there. Yeah, and we're about 10, 15 people, and then I'm usually the only dad there. Yep. <laughs> so I'm the only black dad. I'm only dad and I'm the only, only black dad. dad. Exactly. I am the minority in the room. Yeah. But it's been fun. Hopefully next week we're able to take her to swimming and we'll see what stick sticks, you know, whatever we like the best. Obviously she can't really choose, but whatever we think will be helpful for her, we'll try to keep her in uh, for when I go back to work, then the nanny can continue to take her to these classes during the day. So then I'll be the only black person and the only dad in these classes. So yeah. We'll, they're going to be like, what's happening here? <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so we want to also give you guys some, a few updates on the businesses too. So if you guys didn't know, we have a virtual assistant business mm-hmm. and we work with cleaning business owners who are looking to grow and scale outside of their businesses. A lot of people start these businesses and they are the only person working in the businesses and they essentially become a job. So we work with cleaning businesses only. So We've been going through a few different, few different um, ebbs and flows with that business. So you go through busy seasons with that one. People things slow down during the summer for a lot of business owners, especially cleaning business owners. So you lose a lot of clients, and then during the fall, their cleaning business start to pick up, and they usually get busy, and then a lot of them come back, or a lot of them want to sign on. Mm -hmm. So we're going through the ebbs and flows of that, and. Also, rental property. We don't talk about rental properties too often. So I was talking about this on Instagram, and. I said you have to be comfortable in businesses that do not make you any money to start. Right. So 
What's up? No, was just, that just gives me a point of why we tell some people, some students sometimes, they'll be like, this is my last dime. We'll be like, don't start. Exactly. Don't start the business. You need some type of, uh, what's the word? Cushion. Cushion. Emergency fund, business Emergency fund. Emergency fund, something. But go ahead. So I was on Instagram Live and I was talking about how when we got into the rental properties, we knew immediately that our goal wasn't to make money from it. We said our mm-hmm. goal is to make money down the line. Our goal is to make income for Alani, family, things like that. But you forget that on a day-to-day sometimes because- you get a rental property and the tenant may not pay on the first. So in this case, you know, the tenant didn't pay on the first and they ended up paying on like the 17th or something like that. And I literally was on Instagram live to tell them about how, you know, we didn't receive rent and you got to be okay with that. And as I'm on, I'm like, Oh, actually I just got an email or a text from <laughs> our property manager. They paid the rent. So you gotta be, you gotta be mindful of that when you're starting these businesses that you may not, you have to have emergency funds, number one. And also number two, you can't just jump in thinking that you're going to make money immediately. And I also got an email from someone that's like, Hey, how fast can I make money in the cleaning business? And I said, I don't know anything about you. I don't know your lifestyle. I don't know. I hate that question. Yeah. And it's a hard question to answer Mm -hmm. always because we don't know when you first start who you are, what you do. And you always gotta be mindful that there's a chance that I may not make money in this business when I first start. And you have to think about that long term. It's a long term game. It's a long term mindset you got to have in these businesses. Yeah, I think just I mean, we speak and spoken about this a few times, but just with social media, people feel like things need to be immediate and it happens right away. When Apple started, when Amazon started, when Tesla started, these companies tell you they lose millions, billions. I mean, we don't have we're not at that point. Uber Uh, has Uber. Exactly. (laughs) All these people. And I'm not saying you start a company to lose money. However, it's not about how fast I can make it. The point is I do the work, you know, eventually I would make the money. But if that's all you're thinking about, don't start it. Because when you lose the money, you're going to be like, oh, this don't work. I knew it wasn't going to work. Don't start the business. If that's all you're thinking don't about. Don't buy the property. Don't buy the property. Don't start the business. Don't get the investment account. Don't. Just leave it alone. Don't invest in the stocks. Everybody don't need to be a business owner. And that's okay, too. Don't invest in the stocks. <laughs> don't, don't buy the property. Don't do anything if that's your only intention. So that's why that when that question comes up, I'm like, child. And we want you to make, we want you to make money in of business. Course. But we also, you have be you have to understand that usually in business you don't make your return month one yeah let alone year one in any business that you start so that's something that we have to be mindful of as business owners entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. as people who are looking to make money outside their nine to five that's something you have to be mindful of that's why everybody should not be entrepreneur because you you know you go to work you're not gonna lose any money there you're there you work you get your money done you lose time (laughs) You lose time, but not everybody cares about that. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So if that's, scalable. Your, if that's your thing, then just stick to that. Um, but if you're only focusing on how quick can I get this, blah, 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 just leave it alone. Take a break, come back, reassess, and then and then maybe it'll be, it'll be for you when you get a better understanding of how businesses work. Yeah, Mark Cuban. I was listening to uh, a clip with Mark Cuban. And he said he started his first business with $8,000. Mm-hmm. And he grew that business to over a billion dollar business. He sold it for over a billion dollars. Now, is that that's not for most people. No. That is not <laughs> the norm to start something. And I was like, well, our cleaning business, we started with under 1500 We grew to over a million. Mm-hmm. Can I become Mark Cuban? <laughs> Maybe not. But you have to be okay with growing something off of your own income. Because a lot of people talk about, oh, get into the business and scale it and grow it, put it on credit cards. And and we're like, listen, start the business, start it slow, start using your own money, learn the business, learn the obstacles of the, the business, learn the obstacles of just doing something new. And then eventually you get to a point where you may say, hey, I'm going to sell this thing. Or it's, oh, it's made me a million dollars. Or it's done multiple things for my lifestyle. And then mm-hmm. Kevin Hart was like, you started the business with $8,000. You made over a billion. That return is unheard of. It's yeah. not normal. So don't think you're going to get in business and do that from day one. <laughs> No. And I thought that was a pretty interesting clip too. And he talked the same. He talked about just overall investments. He's like, listen, when I start something and I, I jump into it, I'm not thinking about my immediate turn on return. I'm thinking about my long term investment, my long term strategy, my long term growth of what I've started and what the outlook is going to be. You know, years from now, years from now, we mm-hmm. bought the Mavericks. He bought the Mavericks for like 200 million or something like that. He said at the time it was a lot of money, but. It also wasn't a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Two hundred million wasn't worth a billion dollars then. Mm-hmm. He's like, I never thought my investment would be that big, but I knew it was going to be worth something someday. Something, yeah. And that's another thing, holding it. Yeah, you got being it. able to hold it and knowing that you can see, like, okay, eventually this can turn into something. We say that about the cleaning business too. Yeah, we were under a year in, ready to give up. Then the next month, we boomed and kept going. So we say, like, imagine if we quit, we stopped that time, we wouldn't be teaching how to do run the cleaning business. And we've just, who knows what our life would have been like completely exactly. different, completely different. So as we're talking, I don't know why I'm thinking about things. what, <laughs> um, 
it's probably old for some people, the show that we watch, Untold with Mata Teo. But I just thought about that. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it would have fit for the social media thing we did. But either way, thank you for joining us today. We plan to speak about, we realize that we speak about our businesses. And one of our biggest episodes to date, 40 plus episodes in, is when we talked about the cleaning business and how we, and how we run it. So this episode, not dedicated to, but kind of speaking more about that of kind of do's and don'ts you things you don't need to start a cleaning business is what we will talk about this episode. Right. And how it relates to other businesses as well and things like that. So that's what we'll talk about today. And I want you guys, if you don't have any interest in starting a cleaning business, you should not skip this episode because a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today <laughs> can apply to every business or a lot of businesses that you're thinking about starting or just side hustles that you're thinking about starting too. So yeah. don't, don't skip. Don't don't be like, yo, this ain't for me. Nah. A lot of these mm -hmm. gems that we got from this business that we started, the cleaning business, also applies to other businesses, other side hustles, other entrepreneur and vendor endeavors that we have started as well. So things you don't need to start a cleaning business definitely applies to other things as well. Other businesses. Yeah. Other businesses, side hustles, whatever you want to call it. So first thing, <laughs> jumping right in on it, uh, the way that we run our business is that we work with contractors. So what that means is they have their own supplies. So people ask, what about cleaning supplies? Our contractors would have to have their own cleaning supplies. If you work with employees, yes, you would need to pro uh, provide that cleaning supplies, vacuums, all everything they would need to do the job. Mm -hmm. But since we work with contractors to run the cleaning business, you do not need cleaning supplies. They handle that and that's really it. This also alleviates them, you know, if you have employees and they may have to pick it up from you or you have to pay for those type of things. So this kind of cut expenses as well. Yeah, you definitely lower your overhead where you don't have to stock supplies. So our vetted professionals, they are in the industry already. Mm -hmm. They're already trained either by another company. A lot of them work for another company. Mm -hmm. A lot of them grew their businesses from, grew their own business from learning from another company and they decided to start their own. So they are already trained professionals. So they don't need to come with their own supplies. And that leads us to the next point is that we don't have to know how to clean mm -hmm. because like I said, we're working with trained Big professionals. Mm -hmm. They were already trained. They already have trained their teams. They already have trained their partners or they already were trained as professionals. So mm -hmm. we, we don't, we always say this all the time. Like we don't even clean our own house. So we do have some basic cleaning supplies in our house. We do. Yeah. We have the, mm -hmm. the mop, the broom, the spick and span. We have the Fabuloso. We have a Dyson. We are, I love my Dyson Man, vacuum. We have a vacuum. My Dyson <laughs> vacuum is very expensive because I just enjoy technology. Yeah, that's true too. So we <laughs> got a very expensive vacuum and it's, it looks amazing and, and it's very expensive. Yeah, we have 409. We have the supplies that you would need. However, I think we just have it just in case. Yeah. Um, but no, you don't. You don't need the cleaning supplies and we don't need to know how to clean because people are coming trained knowing how to clean. Right. Um, but once again, we're just speaking about the way that we run it. If you have employees, that's a whole different ball game. You do need to train them. You do need to figure that that out. And even though actually, no, I want to you don't need to train them even if you have employees, because let me let me backtrack a little bit, too. So I always use this narrative or this example is that uh, my CEO at my previous tech company didn't know much about computers. Mm -hmm. He never he never did tech support. He didn't know how to, he didn't need tech supplies. He didn't know how to do tech work. He hired people who knew the industry. That's fair. He was a mm -hmm. business owner. We are teaching you how to be a business owner. So you don't have to know everything about the business mm -hmm. in terms of, and that's number three. You don't have to know everything about the business. Mm -hmm. So you as a CEO, yes, you need to learn business strategies. You need to learn about business in general, but you specifically do not need to know the ins and outs, the nuances of that industry because you hire people who know that industry. You hire trained tech technical professionals. You hire trained cleaners. They know the ins and outs of how to clean, what's clean, things like that. So when you're a CEO, when you're a business owner and operator, you just need to have some people, you need to have people in your corner who know the industry ins and outs because that's what they do on a daily basis because right. when he started when he started the tech company he hired a CTO someone who knew the technology who knew how to rent who knew how to run the technology side of that business that's fair so that's if you have the income for that I guess if you have the income now <laughs> if you don't you may need to get, you need to now hop in the weeds you may, may need to hop in the weeds but I would say it's better to partner with someone who knows that industry or that knows things about that industry so you don't have to learn every single nuance, especially when you start. But I think that's important because I think that that is the reason why a lot of people 
people procrastinate as well when it comes yeah. to businesses because they're like, I got to get everything together. I need to know everything. You're never going to know everything though. So then when are you going to start? It's just like when you started a job, you don't know everything. You eventually learn as you go. Mm-hmm. Obviously you want to know some pillars and stuff that you're not making huge financial mistakes and things like that. But you learn as you go. We learned as we went on that we should be ch- charging sales tax. Mm-hmm. We should have known that. Some people say, oh, you didn't know that? You didn't know. It was our first business. We didn't know that. We learned as we went on. So certain things you just learn as you go. You're not going to know everything. So if you're using that, that's also another excuse that some people use to get started with the, yeah. I need to know everything about the industry that I'm going to be in. or I need to know everything about the business that I'm going to start. Absolutely knowing things to get started but not everything no one knows everything yeah i call that uh perfectly oh. yeah perfectly procrastinating or perfectionist procrastinating or you're procrastinating PP. you're procrastinating pp you're it's so immature, <laughs> you're Is pro- that immature? No, I was, no i was just giving an acronym <laughs> Like pee pee, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thinking about my dog because when our dog goes pee, we tell him pee pee, but boy pee pee. <laughs> so yeah, when our dog goes in when the, he was the yard, training, when he was not training, now. He's six way. years old. Yeah, he's just telling pee pee, but boy. <laughs> so yes, you are perfectly procrastinating when you try to learn everything about the business. And in a perfect world, everyone be, would be able to start a business and say, or even a side hustle and say, I know everything about it. Mm-hmm. If you are in a position, like you said, financially, you could hire someone who knows more. Mm-hmm. Or in our case, like I said, we hire contractors or we work with contractors who already know the industry. So they come back to us and they yeah, also they give us feedback. No yeah. Yeah. They give us feedback. Hey, you might want to charge for this or like, let me give you guys an example. Sometimes like we never used to charge for square footage. We used mm-hmm. to just charge for bedrooms and bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And they said, yeah, you, you will start to recognize. They came back and give us the feedback and said, you will start to recognize that. Matters. Homes that are at the three three bedroom three bath in Dallas, Texas, they they vary in range of square footage. Right. So you might have a fifteen hundred square foot house, or you might have a three hundred not a three thousand square foot house uh-huh. with a three three with a three and bedroom. A, there's three a bath. difference between a three three home and a three three apartment because you know those exist too. So that was like the things that we are finding as well. So yeah, they can provide that feedback. So if you work with someone that knows more than you, which starting out in this industry, contractors are going to know more than you. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. When doing you're the work. working with partners in the business, you want to make sure it's very clear from the beginning that this is a partnership, right? I'm mm-hmm. not your boss. You're not my boss. You don't work. You don't work for me. We work together in this business so that they can provide you that feedback and feel comfortable okay. providing you that feedback and that's just not important in the cleaning business that's important in any business yeah you start. I'm, I'm thinking like if you hire a virtual assistant a social media manager like yeah. all these people you hire them because of their knowledge you exactly. hire them because they know more than you copyright or whatever the case may be so leaning on them and having them provide the value is just as important because you don't know it all okay <laughs> yeah you don't want to be the smartest person in the room especially when you're starting a business and mm-hmm. the more you grow the more you scale the more you learn you realize that when you become the smartest person in the room you can't grow Yep. Because if your knowledge is where the business is going to go, you're never going to grow beyond that. Yep. So that's something to be mindful of. So three things we mentioned so far of things you don't need. Uh, cleaning supplies, knowing how to clean, and knowing everything about the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, something else that we don't need when it comes to our business's office space Simply, again, because we work with uh, con- contractors and they have their own supplies. They take it home. They do what they need to do. Now, if you're on the other side, if you have employees, maybe you have the supplies out of your garage that they come and get it. But you need somewhere to store something. If you're having meetings, if you're having interviews in person or they're picking up their supplies every day or you have a car for them, whatever it is, you're going to have to have some type of space at some point. But with this business, you don't need that office space um, at all, unless you just want to rent out a rework to go work there for yourself. But that's yeah. not necessary at all. Yeah, another thing about the office space is that when you are working with people who are always in the field, they don't need, there's no check-in points, right? So mm-hmm. I want to also make it clear too, because we don't know where these videos go on YouTube. So we make it a bunch of people who are just looking to start a cleaning business and they may find the YouTube uh, video. If you guys don't follow us on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe and also stay up to date on our content too. Comment. Very important. Mm-hmm. And while we're here, we're going to take a quick break. If you guys are interested in starting a six or seven figure cleaning business, check out Cleaning Business University. Uh, we'll give you the A to Z curriculum on how you could do that, how to start a remote cleaning business without cleaning Whoa, any slow down. without fast. cleaning any <laughs> houses. Because yeah. I know that like the back of my hand, so I kinda like Yeah, speak yeah, through yeah. It. No, I, I'm not you know? saying anything. We both speak fast, but just sitting listening, I'm like, you gotta slow down. No, not you know what I may do? I may just start taking the clips of that and just posting it in episodes. So I don't have to repeat it. Repeat it every time. I mean, that's totally fine. 
You see how we, we're learning and growing along with you guys? That's totally fine. You, oh, I mean, that's a great example about growing and learning, just even with the podcast. Yeah. If you've been watching with us since day one, we're on episode 40 plus. Um, things have changed. <laughs> if you're watching visually, things have changed. Maybe our audio has changed. I don't know how it's, if it sounds different for you guys, but things have changed. Just talking about, you know, not knowing it all and growing different cameras, different sound, different background, all of that. So Yeah. So... You don't have to start in a major metropolitan city mm -hmm. or you don't have to start in your backyard, too. So we right. recommend you starting. We do recommend it you depends. starting in your backyard, though, because we feel like you would know your backyard better than most than any other area than any other area. So mm -hmm. there's, a, there's two nuances of this. Yes, you can start it in other cities and states. And you don't have to start it in your own city or state, meaning the one that you reside in currently. Mm -hmm. But we do recommend you start it in your backyard because, like, let's say for Dallas, we live in Dallas, Texas, right? If we were started in Oklahoma, yes, we could start another business. We, yes, we could have started there. But we know the areas that our cleaners are going to go to. We know the areas mm -hmm. that they don't want to go to. We know the areas that are most affluent when it comes to money. We know the areas that are too far from the metropolitan Center, area of yeah. Dallas. So there's nuances of starting, you know, where you are locally and also starting in different states. And both are definitely possible since we said you don't need to be in the state you start in, too. Yeah, and especially for us, this was our first business, so... We wanted it close, 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 yeah. very close to us. So, you know, there's some people that are investors and they, you know, they may have properties in different states and they have different, so they may know areas and are comfortable with, I don't need to be at that place to know anything. That's fine too. But yeah, most of us, that most people or most of our students that are getting started, maybe this is your first business as well. Um, and you have just a better understanding of the areas that you're in. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, knowing how to, so small city, big city, this is another big one that people ask us about a business plan. And I'm like, I never even seen a business plan to be quite honest. So, um, now I will say it does depend on the business, obviously that, you know, I guess if it's a tech company or certain things that you're starting, you probably need a business plan, but for the cleaning business, you do not need a business plan. You can simply write things out and bullet it to say like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And that's exactly how we did it when we started. And that's your business plan. If down the line, you eventually want to write something, sure. But that is another thing that I feel like is people procrastinating and giving, not an excuse, but like, oh, I need to write this business plan before I get started. Why? Mm -hmm. What is the business plan providing for your customers, for your clients, for your contractors? What is it? What is it providing? Are you we're waiting. <laughs> not you, that we'll get a response, him? but I'm just saying uh, a business plan is not something that is necessary for the cleaning business. Like I said, they may, may be certain businesses that it is, but for this specific one, we would say no. So we started, we actually did have a business plan for the cleaning business. What was it? Where is it? And we threw it away because it wasn't necessary. <laughs> It was because you thought that we thought that this is what you needed for. A we thought <laughs> we thought it was it was necessary. And even when we go back to say things, you don't need to start any business like mm -hmm. a business plan is just you another form of procrastination. So mm -hmm. we were spending time. You don't remember how we said, oh, we want to do 10,000 in revenue. Here's how many clients we need. Here's how many houses we need to clean. Yeah. We wrote this whole elaborate. But we do that now and just like write the number. That's what I'm saying. So we wrote this whole, but we did that but to start. Remember, we said you don't need this to start a business. Mm -hmm. So we wrote this plan out before we started a business on how we're going to get 10,000 clients, how we're going to get $10,000 in revenue, mm -hmm. how we're going to get you know, 200 clients, but whatever the number was. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and we were trying to figure it out based on this, this plan. And I always say that I would rather you take the action than sitting down being motivated by papers or reading or books or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to learn That's more fair. from that action. You're going to learn more from going out there and actually getting the work done. You're going to learn more from your client base. You're going to learn from your mistakes more than more importantly than your wins. And you're going to learn like, all right, that business plan didn't make sense. Because <laughs> you're going to use that as a crutch to not get started. So you're going to sit down and write this. I, I went to this, uh, what was it? Oh, I'm trying to remember. I went to this class. You Do you remember when I sat down before we started the business? And I drove to this spot in the morning, and they, it was like a business class. No, I don't. I it was. I was sitting down with this guy. What was it called? I can't remember the name of it. 
But I signed up for this 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 free class, and they teach you how to start a business from people who've been in business for decades, right? Okay. And I went to this class. I took off for of work. Actually, I went to this class, and it was like a one on one setting. Me and this it's this older white guy who ran a marketing business mm-hmm. decades ago, and I was talking about how to market my business, and. Social media wasn't in his plan, I'm assuming. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He had no idea. He had no idea how we were running this cleaning business online. And I'm saying that was in probably 20, we started 20, 2018, probably. Might have been 20s. Yeah, it was 2018. And I'm sitting explaining to him how we run our cleaning business online. And he's like, wow, you got a good idea going here. And I'm, <laughs> You're I'm like, like, I'm not the I'm first. I'm like, you're supposed to be saying, yeah. I'm not the first and I won't be the last. But yeah. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how you could help me. And I'm explaining my business model to you. So you're like, uh. <laughs> it was, it was an, I don't want to say it was a waste of time, but he learned a lot. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say he learned a lot, but it also made me realize that me sitting there trying to write it down, trying to get all the advice in the world versus just doing the business can actually be a form of procrastination as well. Mm-hmm. Doing and the work. Yeah, and that was like me doing the work. I learned a lot more from doing the work than actually sitting down talking to somebody about doing the work. So that's another thing, too. You want to make sure you're actually doing the work versus sitting around trying to procrastinate and and you're talking about the work versus actually doing it. So yeah. that's another big point. Um, another one that we speak about is like having a nice logo. And if you're listening, you're probably or a nice like, website. What? Or a nice website. You're like, like, what? What are you talking about? Let me tell you. I, I can tell you firsthand because when we first started, first business, we were stuck on the logo, the Colors, color the of the logo. How does it look? We were stuck on that, like asking other people. Now that we are five years in the business and have had multiple businesses, we see how foolish it is. But when you're first starting out, it doesn't sound foolish because you're like, someone needs to see this. They're going to love it. Once again, for this specific business, because if you're a graphic designer, maybe your logo matters, right? Yeah. Or if you're, if there's certain things that it may need to stand out. But for this, ain't nobody checking for that. A, nobody checking to say, oh, your logo does not have a broom in it, so I'm not going with that cleaning business. Nobody's saying like, oh, well, why is your logo uh, purple? Or if it's pink, it may look sus. But why is your logo purple? Why is it not green? Like, no one is saying that. Trust me, okay? Trust me as someone that's done this firsthand. Spending time on your logo, don't do it. Spending too much money on your logo, don't do it. I know people that they say like, well, I'm going to have my graphic designer friend do it. We'll give them $300, Child, spend twenty to fifty dollars on Fiverr and call it a day. Okay, call it a day. <laughs> and that's another thing too. Yes, there are certain colors that that scream it's emotion psychology. and psychology and all of that mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. And we'll sit there trying to figure that out all day. But at the end of the day, that's not going to bring hey, you more clients. It's not going to bring you more customers. And more importantly, it's not going to make you any money. So you're mm-hmm. sitting there trying to figure out: does blue is, is blue a cleaning color or is or blue a? You need to figure out. Get something done. And we did this like we change it if it doesn't work. Like that's another thing. Yeah. You act like you're married to it. You're literally acting like you can't change the logo if it came down to it. You can. <laughs> if it's that bad or it's bothering you that much, you can change it. But I promise you, people don't care. We don't care. The most important thing <laughs> is to get it out there, get it done so that you could revise it, like you said, make yeah. those changes, come back and like, you, you know go what? Along. And going back to just everything that we're doing, we're literally telling you things that we did when we started that we mm-hmm. don't do anymore that we're learning. Yeah. In business, entrepreneurship, life, family. It helps you for the other businesses. It's, it's, it's everything that we, we've gone through. We're only talking about our experiences. So we go back to the podcast. You guys, if you've been here longer, you can see the transition. You can see the changes. And I'm sitting there saying mm-hmm. to Janoka, oh, yeah, in a couple months, maybe we get another camera so we have another angle mm-hmm. for the podcast. Mm-hmm. But until we get the other camera, you're going to get this straight ahead camera right here. <laughs> and if you listen to the audio, we may get better mics. You may hear, sir, you may hear the long guy outside, but we're not paying the $400 <laughs> on the individual mics yet. But we know down the line, all right, this is where we're going to go. Yeah. We can make these changes. Like, we'll sit here in front of three lights right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you can't see the lights. But mm-hmm. we got three different lights. And then I know, all right, the more expensive light is one big, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's a big overhead light. But we're not there yet. We It's okay to make changes, make iterations as you go along. The most important thing is to get out there, start making money, put the product out there. Because your first product won't be your last. And your last product won't probably won't be your first. Freaking Apple... Brings out a phone every year, and they change one little thing. <laughs> yeah. And they are a trillion dollar company. They change one little thing and keep it pushing, and people buy and keep it pushing. Either buy or you don't. 
right? So they make the tweaks as they go along. There's no way they could have had an Apple uh, iPhone 14 15 years ago. They just weren't that advanced. And that's the same thing for your company. You won't be that advanced at the beginning. Your chapter one to my chapter 20 and vice versa, right? And so growing it as you go along, any business will be important. Different things change. People change. Social media changes. Technology changes. Technology changes. So many things change. So many things change. For your business that you're going to have to adapt and move on. And th- and that's essentially what we're saying with some of these things that we're listing. Yeah. So startup capital, you don't need a lot of money, a lot oh, of money yeah. to start, especially your cleaning business. Especially. We started our, we started our cleaning business. We said it was all the time less than $1,500 and we've grown into over a million dollars in revenue. Mm-hmm. And that's that ROI. And that's it, not even at one chance, uh, at one Point, uh, what am I trying to say? What? Not in one city. You don't oh have to yeah, we didn't. Over. We didn't come out and say we, you don't have to come out of fifteen hundred right away. It's like gradually to get things done. Your LLC, your website, to market to clients online. Maybe you decide to go free. Maybe you don't do any market online. Yeah. You know, to find. You know, that's what that is. Yeah. So you don't need a lot of money to start up, and especially in a business like this where your overhead is low, your capital is low. You don't have any office. You don't have any. You don't have any offices, any supplies, any employees. Mm-hmm. Your overhead capital is going to be a lot lower than actually starting a physical location or a physical. Uh, business. Mm-hmm. Our businesses ran completely online. So that's something else to be mindful of too. So yeah, the money, it's not a lot of money when you think about a business. Um, so yeah. So unless you're going into like, even, even unless you're going into like something like real estate or something that's heavy capital to start and yeah. grow and scale. But if you are, let's say you are, you're strict on money or you're tight on money or you don't have the funds right now, think about something that's a low cost startup that you could, have, you could put more time and effort in than money up front and you can grow that thing. When we started our cleaning business, we put more time and effort a up lot of front time. Yes. so that we didn't have to come out of pocket. Because remember, if you guys may or may not know, mm-hmm. when we started our cleaning business, the goal was to pay off $114,000 of debt. Yeah. So we didn't have a lot of money to go out and put into this business. So we put more time and effort into the business than we did money. Now we put more money into the business than effort to continue mm-hmm. to grow and scale it because we have the we have the capital, we have the investment, we have the we have the funds to do so. Well, especially when you're starting something, if you could put more time and effort up front, it will save you capital, and then eventually you could grow to the point where you're in, you're just reinvesting money back into the business, and now you could take that that investment and that capital to grow it on its own. So time is money. You're going to pay in time. You're going to pay in money. Absolutely. So just to recap, some of the things you do not need to start a cleaning business. We mentioned cleaning supplies, office spaces. You don't need employees. We use contractors. You don't need to know how to clean. You don't need to know everything about the business. You don't need to be in a big city. Um, You don't need a business plan. You don't need a nice logo. And you don't need a lot of money. Okay. Those are the things that you don't need uh, for the cleaning business. And we speak about more things that you do need in our course, as you mentioned in the commercial break. Anything else on your side? Check out cleaningbusinessuniversity.com if you yes. want to start and scale a six or seven figure cleaning business. What do you say is the most important thing that you do need to start a business or a cleaning business? Hmm. That, that, that's a good one. The start a business and a cleaning business may be different. So the most important thing that you do need is... I would say... A long-term mindset to start a business. A change in mindset or just... A long-term mindset. I think okay. when you start when you start a business or any business, think about you know a year, two years, three years, five. three to five years from now. What do you see that business growing into? When you start something, think about three to five years. What do you see that growing into? And then when you get to that three-year or five-year mark, you may say, all right, what do I see the next three to five years or five to ten years? So a long-term mindset and a growth mindset would probably be key to starting a cleaning business. Okay, I would agree with that. Because year one won't be the same as year three. Year three won't be the same as five, and five won't be the same as ten. Right. But you got to get through year one through three to see years five to ten. So I would also add on to that with just like some cushion financially. Mm -hmm. So obviously we see you don't need a lot of money, but we don't. We don't suggest starting any business when this is your last dime. Now, you may see some social media people, they say, like, I used my last dime and I made 50 million. Okay. <laughs> that ain't happening for most of us, let's be real. Um, but I think you just need some type of cushion because if not, when something goes wrong, the whole business is disrupted. Or you're like, I can't afford to do this anymore. I can't afford to put in anymore. So, you know, having some type of money to get started. And then when the business starts flowing, you probably don't have to take any money from like your personal into the business anymore. The business is just paying for itself. 
right? And that is the good thing about this business as well. Once we started, the business basically was paying for itself. We may feel like, oh, well, we're not making any money. But if you're not putting in any more, I mean, you technically are because your business is helping to pay for expenses and things like that. So I would say to just have some type of cushion and not start a business on your last breaking dime. Yeah, you said it will be hard on your business. It'll be hard on you, your mindset. It'll be hard on you personally. That's true, too. If mm-hmm. things aren't going well in something that you start and you don't have the financial means to keep that thing going, you're going to be thinking about every day, should I keep going or mm-hmm. should I quit this? Yeah. And you won't be able to get to year three to five if you are on your last dime and mm-hmm. you didn't have an emergency fund or fund set aside. So I think that's a very important key. So having an emergency fund and having a growth mindset too. Absolutely. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribing, commenting, sharing, writing us a review. We really appreciate those. We read those on here when you write us a review. Make sure you're doing that. And thank you for tuning in once again. See you guys next Tuesday. Peace. This has been an episode of the Hearthog Hustle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And follow Anthony and Janilka on Instagram at The Hartrimony. That's T-H-E-H-A-R-T-R-I-M-O-N-Y. Keep hustling, baby. Keep hustling, baby. Get that money. Get that money.